Hey beautiful people, it's Minsko here. You might have noticed, new jump part. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are. Is it on brand, is it not? But in this video, I'm gonna walk you guys through step by step in terms of how to create beautiful and delightful and seamless transitions and animations in your UI prototypes. But make sure to stick right to the end because throughout this entire video, I'm gonna sprinkle in a lot of tips and tricks, but more importantly, I'm gonna answer a lot of edge case questions about animations in Figma. So guys, without further ado, let's get right into it. So before we do, let's just quickly go through those animations once again so you understand and I can walk you through step by step of what we're going to be achieving. So I have conceptualized a very simple app to help travelers document their experiences. Now, if you got to pick between Japan, New Zealand, and the United States, where we can travel again, which one would you pick and let me know in the comments below. So let's just say we wanna open up this Japan photo that we've taken in Japan in some alleyway. We want everything to fade out, the menu bars to fade in, and then the content to fade in right after. That's the first animation that we are going to create. So the second animation that we are going to create is if we click on this photo, it's going to grow, fill the screen, and then the comments will sort of fade in right after. So take a look, grow, fade in. That is the second transition that we are going to be creating. And these two are very, very different. So I'm gonna walk you through step by step in how to create all these animations that we're gonna blow your dev team and also your clients away. So let's get right into it, guys. So let's just take a quick look. We've got the start screen already designed. We've also got the end state already designed. And make sure if you wanna follow along, there is a link in the description. So feel free to download the file, get access to this beautiful design that I've created. But more importantly, guys, more importantly, for your own benefit, gently smash that like button because I will really appreciate it. And then I will create more free content because this channel will be growing. All right, guys. Let's get right into it. Let's waste no more time. Let's move this over here. Let's quickly take a look at this. So what happens next, right? So let's grab the experiences frame. We've got all the elements, but actually before we do that, let's just quickly take a look at what's in this actual frame to help you understand what we're gonna be doing. So we have navigation, right, cool. Then we have United States, makes sense, New Zealand, Japan, header. Hmm? Why is there a header? Why is it off the screen? Why is the comments box hidden? Why is the leave a comment off the screen as well? What is happening here, guys? What, what is going on? So I need you guys to understand, when you are creating animations in Figma, you need to make sure that every single element on the screen has a starting state and an end state, right? So even if you want, let's say for example, you want this to disappear, never should you actually delete it, right? you should always set the opacity to zero because when you want to bring it back in your prototype, you, need, you can then tell Figma that it is just going from 0% back to 100% and you can create those transitions. Now, if you delete that entire element and then you try to make it reappear and you want it to fade in, Figma is smart, but it's also incredibly dumb and it won't know how to fade it back in because it doesn't even exist anymore. So what you need to do is set all the elements that you don't want to be visible to 0%. So this will allow you to set it back to 100% and transition it, move it around, fade it in, or whatever you want to do later on. So that is why we actually have a leave a comment that's off the screen because we actually want to fade it up. We also have the header off the screen because we want to fade it down. And then we also have the comments faded out because we want to fade it in. So hopefully you guys understand that. Now let's hit on experiences, Mac, Command D, Windows, Control D. Now grab your, grab the navigation, right? Make the opacity zero. Let's grab Japan, let's make that zero. Let's grab New Zealand and let's make that zero. And let's grab United States and make the opacity zero. Now that's the first transition that we are going to be creating. So everything fades out. Now what we're gonna do is grab Experiences frame again, Command D, Control D to duplicate. Now, what, we, what do we want to do? We want to make the headers and the comments fade in. So what we want to do is open up the frame, grab the header, align it to the top. You can manually do it, or you can actually just align it spank bang, let Figma do all the hard work. And then what we want to do is also grab the leave a comment bar and fade and slide that up. So I realize that's a 0%, that should actually be 100%. And then we want to tuck it to the bottom. So you can hit align bottom, bang, there we go. 
So now what, we've, what we're telling Figma is, we are actually telling Figma to fade everything out and then fade these menu bars and the comment uh, tab in. And then what we wanna do is we wanna duplicate this frame once again. And what do we wanna do here? We actually wanna fade the image in now. So let's just take a quick look at this because it gets a little bit tricky here. So do remember, right? Do remember that we have this photo right here and this photo of Japan needs to actually be much larger, right? So what are we going to do here? Now, let's take a look at how this is structured. So we have a Japan frame that is housing, that's sort of grouping all the Japan related images and titles together. Now, what we wanna do is we actually wanna make, let's take a look at this line. We wanna make the image 343 by 274. So let's do that first. So let's make 343 by 274, right? So that's that. And we also want it to be 100%. We want it to fade in, right? But it's already set to 100%. Why is it still invisible? It's because if you take a look at the Japan frame, we've actually set that to 0% because we want it to be hidden previously. So what we want to do is set this back to 100%. And then we want to set the Japan title to 0% because we don't want that to appear. We want to hide this other image that is sort of, you can see it right there, make that 0%. And then we want to move this image with our keyboard, just push it up to the top. So pretty much what we're trying to achieve is exactly this. We want, we want the images to, to fade in, right? So that is the third transition. Now let's hit experiences once again. Let's hit command D, control D to duplicate. And what do we want to do here? We want to fade in the comments. So let's just take a look at the comments over here. There we have it. Now, we actually want this to not just fade in, but also fade and slide up uh, slightly. So if you notice that the comments are actually at the same level right now, they're in the same exact same position. So in the transition, what we actually want to do is we want to move it up a little bit. So it's going to fade up and then we want to set the opacity to 100%. So there we have it. Now, that is really how we can create all the different states for this transition. So I'm gonna zoom out. Now, what we need to do is select the first screen, head over to prototype on the right hand side. Now what we wanna do is we wanna zoom back in and we wanna just create these transitions in between these screens. So simply, whoops, getting a little bit tricky here. Sometimes it does do that. So if you want, you can just create a little bit more distance between each screen so they don't, um, it doesn't sort of get auto, it doesn't do that auto detection. And let's just click on this experience. What we want to do is on click, we want to navigate to this screen. We want to make sure that smart animate is set, right? That will animate everything. We want to make it sure it eases out and we want the duration to be 400 milliseconds. So let's just do that for now. Let's connect these two screens together. Should be the same, whoops. Actually, this one won't be the same. This one will be on a delay. So remember, when we create the prototype, when everything fades out, we don't want to be clicking anything. We just want there to be a slight delay and then the, the menu bars uh, slide in. So let's just quickly set a delay for, let's just say 100 milliseconds. So a short delay and then ease out, bang, 400 milliseconds, perfect. Now we also want to do that for the same one over here. Now, once again, we don't want to set clicks here. We want to set it on a delay again. So Maybe we can set this one to, let's just say, uh, 200 milliseconds, or we can try 100 milliseconds. Smart animate, ease out, 400 milliseconds, perfect, done. And then what we wanna do here is the exact same thing. So let's just quickly set that on a delay, no clicking around, or set, whoops, let's just make that 100 milliseconds. So pretty much that is as simple as that. So what we wanna do, let's just quickly zoom out, Let's close our previous prototype. Let's open it up again, refresh it, and let's see what it looks like. We might have to tinker the transitions a little bit, but this will give you a good understanding. So when we click on this photo, it's going to fade out. Suddenly everything appears. So did you notice something right there? Did you notice that the photo doesn't really just fade in nicely? It sort of grew, faded in and moved. So let's just quickly take another look at that. So take a look at this closely, right? It sort of did this weird grow, 
animating and also move up. Now remember, that's not what we're trying to achieve, right? So what we are trying to achieve is we're trying to, we're hoping that this photo will simply be the same size, it doesn't grow and it just simply fades in and goes up. Now, what we need to fix is on the third screen, when the photo is actually hidden, we wanna set this photo to be the exact same width. So 343, three, let's grab this photo in this hidden state and let's already define this as 343, three, right? Whoops, let's make sure we set the same aspect ratio, 343. Three. There we go. And let's just make sure we hide, let's just fade out the Japan, fade out the other image as well. Here we go, all right? And now, if you notice the previous state to this one, the photo is already the same width. So when we transition from this screen to this one, it's actually not going to grow. It's already the same size. It's simply just gonna fade up. So let's just take a quick look at this new prototype. And we'll see the magic happen. Here we go. Ready? So when we click on the photo, what's going to happen? It's gonna work perfectly. Bang, fade out, boom. Right, so obviously we can refine that. It doesn't look exactly the same as the prototype is because we just need to move this up a little bit, right? So we just wanna move this up a tiny little bit so it doesn't actually, so the photo doesn't actually just fly up so high. So let's just quick, take a quick look at this, Japan. Boom, boom, there we go. Looks much better, right? So obviously you can tinker this as much as you want. You can make it look beautiful, make sure the easing is right, make sure the distance it's moving is correct, but hopefully you get an understanding. So let's just quickly close that. Now the second animation that we are going to create is the fact that it, the photo, when it's clicked, it's actually going to grow. So it doesn't disappear, it will just simply grow, fill the screen, and then the comments will slide up. So let's just quickly take a look at this. Grow, slide up. So it's a different approach to what we just created. And I'm gonna walk you through this step by step. All right, so make sure to gently smash that like button if you like that step by step approach. All right, so let's quickly go back and let's just quickly take a look at what we are going to be creating. So now that we've already got this state completed, what we wanna do is if we click on the back arrow, it will actually take us back to the home screen so then we can create the second type of animation. So click on the home screen, Command D or Control D if you're on a Windows. And what we're gonna do is, we're gonna create the next screen for this animation. So once again, Command D or Control D if you're on a Windows. And what have we learned, guys? What have we learned? We've, let's make the things we don't want, zero, uh, zero opacity, so zero opacity. Let's make this New Zealand, um, let's just quickly see, New Zealand zero opacity, let's make the United States zero opacity. Now we wanna make Japan zero opacity, all right? We wanna make this image zero opacity as well. And what do we wanna happen, what do we want happen to this photo? We wanna make sure the corner, the radius is zero. We also wanna make sure that it fits full width, right? Full screen, so 375. Let's make sure that this photo set the fixed uh, aspect ratio 375, bang. Flex, uh, push it to the top, let's make it to the top and then make it flush to the sides, there we go. And then what do we wanna do? We wanna fade in the comments. So comments right here, and remember, we don't want the comments to fade up so high, that's, that's a lot of distance right there. So let's just quickly move this comment further up as a starting point, right? And then let's duplicate the experiences once again. Let's turn this comment section, let's move it up a little bit, so that's how much it's going to animate. Let's hit 100%, and let's duplicate this upward again. And then what, we want, what do we wanna do? We wanna grab that comment section. So where's that comment section? Let's just grab this one over here, leave a comment, and we wanna tuck it to the bottom and we also wanna turn this 100%. So it is that simple. When you do the planning and you've got your files structured right, you've got the naming conventions right, when you do animations, it's actually very, very simple. So you zoom out, let's grab our experiences, let's grab, go to prototype, and let's just quickly make sure that we've got everything correct. Let's remove that transition, let's make sure that this experience, right, let's bring this, 
transition down to this screen. So if we click anywhere on the screen, it's gonna take us back home, right? And then what we wanna do is we wanna grab this image or this screen, click any, if we click on this image, it's going to transition over to this screen. We wanna create a transition from, let's just quickly delete that because we duplicated this, remember? So we just have to remove those transitions. So let's just move this further out. Move this further out and let's create those transitions in between. Once again, so on click, sorry, that shouldn't be on click. That sh this one should be after delay. Let's make that 100 milliseconds, 400, perfect. Let's just create a, a delay after this one as well. Milliseconds and 400, so perfect. All right, so pretty much it is as simple as that. Let's just quickly click on this home screen. Let's preview this and let's watch the magic happen. All right, guys. We have, the foot, we have our home screen, we hit on Japan, fades out, fades in, beautiful. Let's go back to home screen, whoa, so good. Let's hit on Japan again, boom, whoops. So what has happened there guys? What has happened there? Let's go back one screen really quickly. It didn't actually grow and it just happened, right? So I know exactly why that happened. So if you take a look at this, and this is why I mentioned naming conventions is very important. I accidentally moved this image out of the out of the frame of Japan. So Figma treated it as an entirely new element right there. So now that I moved it back into Japan, Figma will realize, oh, this photo is exactly the same as this photo. So I'm actually gonna grab the starting point measurements and dimensions and grow it into what, the, what you see over here. So let's just quickly go back into here. Let's go back a little bit. So we're on this screen and we can hit the photo, boom, and it grows, right? It grew into that photo. It set the measurements from the start to the end state. And that is why I mentioned always have the start states and end states for all your designs and also make sure that all your naming conventions and structuring of your files are consistent because even if something is outside of a folder, outside of a group or a frame, Figma will treat it entirely different. So. Once again, let's just quickly close this and preview it from start to end. And here we go, guys. Let's hit Japan. Fade out, fade in, fade in, fade in. And then we wanna go back. We hit on Japan once again. Grow, and it all fades in. Obviously, guys, you can refine the easing, the timing, all in between. But this hopefully gave you a very good understanding of how to create your very first animation within Figma. All right guys, hopefully you found this video extremely useful. And if you did, make sure to, you know what, to gently smash that like button to help this channel grow. Once again, I really appreciate you guys. There's been a lot of support and I will see you in another video very, very soon.